The first reading today, St. Paul, in speaking to the Thessalonians, talks to them about the way the gospel was preached to them, most importantly, the way the gospel was received by them. And he says to them that the gospel did not come to you in word alone, but in power, in the Holy Spirit, and with much conviction. Now it's a point each and every one of us has to look into our own hearts and ask ourselves, that sound like it'd be said of me? Not about necessarily the way the gospel has been preached to us, which obviously that's the way it should have been preached if it hasn't been, but how do I receive the gospel? Is it in power? Is it in the Holy Spirit? Is it with much conviction? Let's change the way that that is stated. In the power of the Holy Spirit, do I not only truly believe, but truly love Jesus Christ? That's what it comes down to. Am I willing to serve the Lord? Not just simply to acknowledge that he is Lord, to serve the Lord, to give my life to him, for him. Is that what we're willing to do? Because otherwise the gospel, we'd have to say, has not come to us in power. It's just something that's there and it's a nice thing that's there. It's good that it's there. But who cares? It's not in the Holy Spirit if we're not truly loving the Lord. Granted, no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit, as St. Paul says. But we tend to keep the Holy Spirit at an arm's distance. Yes, he's there. And we're able, praise the Lord, to say that Jesus is Lord. But we don't allow the Holy Spirit to change our hearts. We don't live as if Jesus really is Lord in my life. Sure, we'll acknowledge him generically. But as we've talked about hundreds of times, St. James reminds us that even the demons can acknowledge the existence of God. So we're not really doing a great job. It's a good thing that we can acknowledge this, but it's, we've got a long way to go if that's all that we're doing. It needs to be in power and in the Holy Spirit and with conviction. Has that taken place in our lives, in our hearts? That's what it is to, be, to believe in the Lord. And so St. Paul tells us that the Thessalonians rejected their idols and they turned to live into the living God. How many people in our society now have rejected the living God and turned to idols? How many people were baptized as babies but have no faith? But boy, do they believe in the idols. Oh yeah, there are some these days that are worshiping stupid statues and goddesses and so on, but for most of us, the idols are things like our smartphone that we think that we cannot live without. All you have to do is just think of the panic that happens in people's lives if they actually forget the stupid thing. I know most people don't forget it because it's in their pocket all the time. So therefore, it's hard to forget it because you're attached to it or it's attached to you. But if there's something that actually happens where you actually forget the thing, oh my goodness, you would think that there is nothing worse that's happened in years because I have to drive from here to there and I don't have my phone. Nobody even had one until 20 years ago, ever. And suddenly we can't live without it. Or just ask yourself, what else has become our idol? 
Maybe it's this or that website that I can't live without. It's this or that food that I can't live without. We don't need God, but we need these things. No, we don't. If the gospel has been received in the Holy Spirit and with power and conviction, then we recognize, as Jesus told us, one thing only is necessary. Isn't that amazing? Because we have professionals who do advertising and marketing who tell us all these things are necessary. You have to have this. You can't do without it. Jesus said, one thing only is necessary. Jesus, that's what's necessary. And if we trust him, if the gospel has been received in the Holy Spirit and power and conviction, then we trust he's got everything under control and he'll take care of us. Sure, we have our part to do. We can't just lay on our bed and say, oh good, he'll just take care of it all. No, we have our part to do. But we just trust him. And he handles everything. But how many of us actually do that? Very few. Because the gospel has not been received in the Holy Spirit and with power and conviction. I've told you this story before, and it is one that impressed me deeply in the, in the negative sense of it. But it was a priest, Franciscan priest, talking about Father Solanus Casey. And I'm sure he didn't intend this quite the way that it came out of his mouth, but it made the point loud and clear and talk about conviction and what it does to us. After telling a few stories about some of the miracles that Father Solanus worked, this priest simply looked up at the man who was interviewing him and said, you know, the difference between Father Solanus and the rest of us is that he believed what Jesus said in the gospel. Like, bingo! This is a priest who is saying, Father Salamis believed what Jesus said, the rest of us don't. Wow. So now, how about us? Do we really believe what Jesus said in the gospel? Do we really believe in Jesus? Or do we sort of maybe kind of hopefully hedge my bets just in case in case this isn't real or in case that is, I, I, I just need to make sure. No, no, no. It's one or the other. I keep telling you that. There's no in-between on this one. There is only one God. And there can only be one God. And there isn't any other. So we all have to look at this question. The Thessalonians 2,000 years ago, they recognized the truth that St. Paul preached to them. And the gospel was received by them in power, in the Holy Spirit, and with conviction. 2,000 years later, the words of the gospel go in one ear and out the other. That's the part that needs to change. By that, I don't mean it needs to change out there, which it does. I'm saying it needs to change in here, in my heart and in your heart. So that the words of the gospel go in, they go into the heart. They actually affect us, change us, so that we will allow the power of the Holy Spirit to work, so that we will be convicted by the truth, by the one thing only that is necessary, Jesus Christ.